Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in uh, today's class on uh, Minister's Foundation. We welcome each one of you, and we appreciate the time that you have taken uh, to study the word in a systematic way. Uh, so uh, before we could uh, go ahead with the course, I will just take you all through the course objective and the grading process, and then we will move on to the course. Uh, yeah. So what we would be learning uh, in this course is we will uh, recognize God's call, God's plan, God's purpose in our life, and we will be able to understand how God takes us through the life to unfold his plan, his purpose, and how it's been fulfilled in our life. Uh, and uh, we will also learn in several ways by which we receive God's guidance, enabling us to follow him through all the uh, life decisions, points. Uh, it can be big or small, even as we journey into God's, uh, uh, you know, God's purpose for our life. And we will also gain an understanding of the importance of adhering to the more, uh, to the moral values and principles, ethics, and standards in the Christian ministry and grow in the practical wisdom. The uh, godly instruction presented in the course, uh, when and if paid attention to, uh, it can uh, keep us from the pitfalls in the life and help us uh, 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 help us uh, finish the race or finish the uh, call and purpose of God well in a much better way. Uh, you can say and uh yes as i uh we would be following three books in this course uh the first half that is from the month of august from now till december sorry uh till uh September, we would be uh, completing, we would be studying on two books that is fulfilling God's purpose for your life and receiving God's guidance. And the next half, that is from uh, October to November, we would be uh, studying on the Code of Honor. So, totally, we have three books in this course. One is fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Second is receiving God's guidance. And the third is code of order. The uh, Okay, so we encourage you to personally uh, uh, keep your Bible and a notepad handy during this course so that you can jot down the points that has been ministered to you and uh, whichever has been uh, important. And as we go through the course, I will also be giving you all the memory verses, important points to memorize, which will help us uh, which will help us through the course. And uh, yes, there would be a grading system. We would have two uh, grading assessment uh, as we complete the first part, that is fulfilling God's purpose and receiving God's guidance. Uh, by the month of September last week, we would have one grading assessment. And then uh, the other would be at the end of the course in the month of November. Last week, we will be having the second grading assessment. And we would expect you to at least go more than 35% to receive a course certificate. So if do you all have any questions so far, any questions? Uh, no question, Pastor. You can go ahead, ma. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will accept everyone. Okay. There are some of us joining in. Okay. Okay, it's a joy to study God's word and explore the deep things that God has in store for us in his word. And this subject has been my favorite each time I prepare to teach because I get to learn new things and that refreshes me and reminds me of the personal uh, call of God in my life. And also as I study, he directs me and prepares me into the new steps, new areas of what God wants me to do in this season. And though it may sound very simple, okay, but it's very important for us to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And 
how do we go how we uh, go about discovering that plan that purpose in our life is what is very important because it takes for us to see that god god's plan uh, you know how we can discover god's plan to be fulfilled in our life and um, it is a very important subject uh, because and it's also very interesting because um, it plays an important role it it uh, reveals god's plan in our life so today we will try and complete the first three chapters from the book fulfilling god's purpose and the rest three i would request you all to go through it during the weekend so as we begin to study the course on fulfilling god's purpose for our life we need to begin first of all by understanding or just recognizing the fact that in our hearts that god has a plan and a purpose for each one of us and that's what we want to establish in our session today that god has a plan and a purpose for each of us as an individual so we need to understand that there are places that god wants us to go there are people that god wants us to meet there are lives that god wants us to touch and things that god wants us to do things that he has planned for us to to accomplish here on earth and we can say that with extreme confidence that there is no greater satisfaction in life than living a plan and a purpose that god has for us when i say this i say this with my experience because that's the joy that Uh, that we cannot get from doing anything else and there is no greater joy than seeing the fulfillment of that dream that he has given to each of us and in fact there is a no greater adventure to journey on than journeying into the plan and purpose that god has for us now as we begin by understanding god has a purpose for our life god is a god of plan god of purpose and of design the god of the bible the god that we serve he is a god of plan he is a god of purpose and he does not do things um, you know arbitrarily or randomly you know just waking up in the morning and and seeing everything is okay let me figure out you no know, what am i going to do today that's not the way that god works but god has got a plan he's got a purpose and he has a design let's see what the bible tells us in psalms 33 11 psalms 33 11 the counsel of the lord stands forever the plans of his heart to all generation God is a God of plan and purpose and design and objectives. God does not work randomly as we know it. And God knows uh, the end from the beginning and the ancient times things are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The second point we see here is uh if i could go ahead let me project the presentation so that we can go point by point from that So the first point is we are understanding that God has a purpose for our life and we discussed on God is a God of plan purpose of design of objective and the second we are going to study we are going to look at on the second point that God has his purpose the, there's a general purpose or the master's plan which he carries out in our life Give me a minute please there are some students i'm yet i'm admitting them who are joined right now okay so in efficiency 3 11 
it says, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there is an eternal purpose which God is unfolding it and executing on earth. And he refers to this as the master's plan which he is carrying out on earth today. So God's master plan is to have people saved, to come to the knowledge of truth and be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And there's also something called the specific plan. So when there is a master's plan and there's a specific plan. So uh, when there's a master's plan is nothing but the general purpose. It's a general plan, which is there for everyone. But there's a specific plan that is for the called ones, the chosen one. God has chosen you and me for his purpose. And there is a specific plan plan for each one of us. Uh, there is a blueprint for our life and uh, God has a dream for our life and he wants us to fulfill this specific plan in our time as well. We see in Philippians uh, chapter 3 verse 12 that I have already attended or am already perfected but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So we see here that Paul is writing the Philippians and saying, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on to lay hold on which that Jesus has laid hold of me. So uh, there should be something that within us that gripping the call. You know, we need to grip the call, the purpose that God has for each one of us in our life. And that is a good work. We see uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, Paul says that, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, there is a specific plan. And here Paul says that it is a good plan. God has pre-planned for us to accomplish it on earth. So there are places, as I said, that God wants us to go, which no one else can do it. And he, God wants, uh, uh, you know, there, there are people he wants us to touch, the lives he wants us to impact, things he wants us to accomplish in and through us, and cities to transform and nation to shake. So living a life is simple. But finding out what God has planned for our life and walking in it makes the difference. And that that's what fulfills God's plan in our life. We see in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling according to our works, but not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So God has called each of us in his own purpose. And God is, uh, you know, and uh, God is calling us to partner with God, with him and to fulfill this purpose so that, you know, we can uh, we can fulfill the complete plan. So like how we have two hands put together is when we can hear the sound the same way. We need to partner with God. We need to uh, we need to cooperate with God to fulfill the call and the purpose in our life. So only then he can accomplish it through us. Fourth point we study here is God's plan for us is always good. We see that in Jeremiah 29, 11. I want everyone to memorize this scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I have toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, that is the Shalom. What's peace in Hebrew? Shalom. Shalom means it's just it's just not only the peace, it means well-being, health, prosperity, success, and peace. Uh, so we also see in Romans 8:28. Again, it's a memory verse. Please note down. I know many of y'all who are uh, who are uh, in the ministry for a long time would have got these verses memorized but this class we have a combination of the young uh, who are in the Lord so we would be giving them a lot of memory verses and it's for all of us it is good that we memorize these scriptures time and again Romans 8 28 
So what does Romans 8.28 say? It says that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So having this unshakable confidence that we are, that uh, God has a plan and that plan is good for each one of us. And there's nothing better than being in God's plan for our life. And with this, we will move on to the fifth point. We must cooperate with God to fulfill his plan because God expresses that his will in heaven. But he looks to us, his people on earth, to execute that plan. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers and you are God's field. You are God's building. So very clearly, God is looking up to us, saying that you are my fellow workers. I look up to you to fulfill the call, the purpose on this earth. I want you to execute my plan on this earth. With this, we will move on to the sixth point. We must discover and pursue God's plan for our life. God's plan and purpose for our life need not be a mystery. Some people are of opinion that God's will is so mysterious that we cannot know it. That is so untrue. God is more than willing to reveal his plan, uh, to reveal his will and his plan, his purpose for our life. If we are willing to seek him for it, because uh, till now we have seen from the Old Testament or in the New Testament how God reveals his plan to people. He calls them, he tells them, and he, uh, he, 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 you know, he brings them into the plan of God. We see in the life of Abraham, we see the same thing in the life of Moses and uh, in the New Testament. Uh, I mean, we see that throughout the uh, books of the Bible, we see how God calls, he reveals it, and then he brings them into the plan. The same way to us, as well uh, if I ask each one of you all to share your testimony and you know, each one of you all will share how God called us and here is preparing to fulfill that call so uh, uh, with this we'll move on to seventh point it says God will prepare you to fulfill his plan and purpose so as God has called us he's also preparing us he's preparing us uh, to fulfill that call the more uh, the uh, the greater our preparation our greater the call is the greater our preparation that we need to go through because the preparation time is never a wasted time. So this time is very crucial to each one of us as God is preparing. Let's pay uh, the full attention to prepare ourselves. When we prepare ourselves, we'll see the benefit of that preparation in our ministry throughout our life so the eighth point says we may make mistake but god can help us overcome our failures and complete his call with this we should not be uh, taking things for granted by going and uh, doing uh, you know uh, mistakes again and again but then god is saying even by uh, when we do mistake uh, in our weaknesses uh, you know god is uh, greater god is more than enough for uh, you know to forgive us and and redeem us from whichever place we are and restore us back to fulfill his call and his purpose in our life. And uh, we see that in Paul's life, uh, you know, uh, how God um, uh, redeemed Paul, how God uh, changed Paul's life on the road of Damascus. The one encounter with Paul uh, changed the whole life of Paul. The man who was persecuting the Christians, now he is for Christians. He also goes to an extent, uh, you know, to give his life for God. So we see that in the same way to each one of us, when we see that the mistakes, uh, when we see our background, we see that God was more than enough to forgive us our sin. He has redeemed us and he has restored us. Throughout the Bible, we see that uh, all the leaders, whomever God has chosen, they were not perfect being. They were not perfect being. But then God forgave them. God restored them. God's plan and his purpose was fulfilled in their life. So unlike that, in our class today, as we listen, we may think like, you know, sometimes we feel like even God cannot forgive my mistake. I think God is more than enough. 
is a God of forgiveness, is a God of love. He will forgive us and restore us back to his call and purpose. God loves you and he has called you. He has chosen each one of us to fulfill his call and his purpose in our life. The ninth point says that Satan will do his best to stop us from fulfilling God's purpose. So God, uh, God-given dream will always face a demonic opposition. Always remember, delays are not a denial from God. We need to work this out. There will be a lot of obstacles in our life. But as you have been led by God, He also uh, supports us in our weaknesses. He strengthens us to overcome those uh, uh, obstacles because Satan attempts to delay our miracle and thus he weakens our desires to keep reaching out for God's highest and God's best. So we should not give up uh, on the process. I think some students are waiting. I'll just admit them. Okay, with this, we will move on to the 10th point. Are you all able to see the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So the 10th point is we must remain focused on God's call. Uh, sometimes we may be distracted and uh, being, uh, being uh, uh, away from the focus, but then God is saying that we should remain focused on what God has called. There may be a lot of uh, distraction on our way, but then, we need to be focused. God said that do not turn to the right or to the left, but be focused on what God has called to each one of our lives. So how we can be focused? When we pray, when we have this uh, fellowship with God, when we have, uh, when uh, uh, during the course of time, when we have built the relationship with God, we would know even when we uh, go astray or little, uh, little deviate from the focus, God will give that inner sense that, you know, we have been deviated or we have been distracted and this is not God's way. There's always an inner voice that says, this is the way going. So that's so true. It happens in our life. So we need to be focused. We need to have this relationship with God so that we know uh, that we are on his path. And the 11th point says we must have endurance. Endurance is very, very important in the ministry, in the call of God. We need to endure it. The taste of victory outlasts the memory of the struggle, Mike Murdoch says. Your endurance is very important. That's what strengthens us. When we endure, you, you will receive the reward for that endurance. With this, we will move on to the second chapter, recognizing God's purpose for, for our life. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. Can one of us read this? Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God, will of the Lord is. Thank you. The scripture tells us to understand, put together, comprehend the will and the purpose of what the Lord is, so that we can understand what the will of the Lord is. Can one of you all please turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 11? Colossians 
Colossians chapter 1, verse yes. 9 to 11. Mm -hmm. for, for this cause we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be fulfilled with the knowledge of his will, and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, that ye might walk in the worthy of the Lord unto the pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing the knowledge of God. Verse 11, strengthens with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patient and long-suffering with joyfulness. Thank you. Amen. Is it possible for us to be filled with the knowledge of his will? None of us need to be in the dark concerning the will of God for our lives. So it requires the wisdom and spiritual understanding to know his will. Once we know his will, we can then understand how we need to walk worthy of the call that God has in our life and how we can please him in our life and how we can be fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. And we also see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, that the eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Mark this as your memory verse. See, the scripture says God's plan is always the best. None of, the, none of them can think what God can do in our life. Even we would not have thought about those greater plans because we always think or imagine according to our own capacity of what we could do it but then God thinks much beyond of what we can achieve or think his plans are much bigger much uh, much higher which even our eyes have not seen our ears have not heard or not even conceived in our heart or none of them around us can think or imagine that we could achieve it is that is God's plan and that's how God achieves in and through us. That's how God brings that greater plan in and through us. So that's why we need to, we need to wholeheartedly believe in our heart and in our mind and accept it that God's plan and his purpose are much better, much bigger than what I can think or imagine. His ways are much higher than us. And we see that uh, time and again how God fulfilled it. Many people uh, in, in the Bible, uh, you know, like we see Abraham, how God called him from nothing and God blessed him. Whatever God promised Abraham was fulfilled in his life. Today, you and me can think. You know, when God has, uh, 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 has uh, promised you or shared his plan with you, which is uh, um, so untrue sometimes, so unbelievable. Can God do this through me? Is it possible? Can God achieve? But our God knows our end from the beginning. Though we may not have a clear picture, but he leads us step by step. He unfolds the plan step by step, just like how God worked in Joseph's life. Even through the difficulties, Joseph never thought that he will become a prime minister. But then God worked through his life. We see how God's plan was unfolded little by little, step by step. The same way God is working today in our life. Little by little, step by step, he's unfolding it. He is leading us in the right path. He is holding our right hand and he is guiding us. We need to trust God. We need to trust God in his call. We need to trust God in his plan. Just like how Abraham walked in faith, we need to walk in faith to see his plan being fulfilled in and through us. How can we do that? only by having a relationship with God. We need to develop this relationship. This relationship is so very important. 
we will see that as we go through the subject, we will see like how we can develop this strong relationship with God. We, with this, we will move on to the first point in the second chapter, which says, recognize the general teaching and the instruction of God's word. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, we see that, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for the doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, truly equipped for every good work. So the word of God are full of his promises. That when we claim these promises, when we believe, when this word becomes real in our life, it is so very important for us to claim the word, believe in his word, make this word real because it is giving us the teaching and the instruction from God's word so that it may be complete and we are truly equipped for his work. God's leading us and is directing our lives always by the written word of God. It does not contradict with the word. It always goes along with the word. His word is the same even today. We see that in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Pray that as we meditate on this word, this word has the power to transform our inner being. It transforms uh, inside out. We are no more the same person, but our mind has been renewed. We have been born again in Christ. We have been made new. May not be physically, but in our in our thoughts, in our way we 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 address ourselves, the way we conduct ourselves with others. You know, we have been renewed. Our inner person has been renewed by the word of God because the word of God has the power to change, to transform a person from who they were to what they become according to the God's plan. We see that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10, that finding out what is acceptable to the Lord is very important. So how do we know what is accepted by the Lord and what is not? We can only recognize that when we have the relationship with God. When we partner with God, when we develop this relationship, we will know what is acceptable to the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit who is in us will always lead us and guide us that is pleasing to God. It is very important for us to develop this relationship with God. For example, uh, uh, we need to uh, we need to abide by the word, and you know uh, go according to the word. For example, you know uh, uh, this example of marriage. What does the scripture uh, scripture says about marriage? We have a lot of youngsters in our class who are yet to be married. What does the uh, uh, scripture says about marriage? The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, it says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Which is very important. We cannot go on to a mode of saying, okay, uh, God has called to, you know, uh, called me to be an evangelist, so I can, uh, you know, uh, bring somebody who are not in the Lord, uh, we can uh, share the scripture and bring them uh, into, into the Lord and, you know, uh, we can settle our life. No, that's not the right way. God says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And, uh, and there's another example, it says the unrighteous acts. Psalms 23 3 says, he leads us in the paths of righteousness. Always God you know, in, uh, his word inspires the still small voice within us, always leads us in the righteousness. He leads us in the right path. Even when we go astray, when we do something wrong, he prompts us, he talks within us saying what we did is not right. So he leads us, he guides us. With this, the second point here we see is recognize the seed in our life. God's word is a miracle seed. 
God's word is a miracle seed. And we see, uh, you know, Jesus himself sharing the parable of the sower and the seed in the book of Mark and the other uh, gospels. We see that in the gospel of Mark, chapter four, verse 26 to 32, we see that the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter the seed of the ground and should, uh, you know, sleep by night and rise by day and see the seed sprouted and grown. And he himself will not know how this happened, but the God has the power to germinate that particular seed. So the God's word is like the seed. When each of us are listening, sitting back and listening to this word, each word has been uh, sown in a heart like a seed. And when you believe, when your heart is prepared as a good ground, this seed as the power to get into that good ground and be, um, you know, to sprout and grow and bear fruits 30, 60, 90 fruit. So God works accordance to the seed principle, where the seed is referred at the early age in our life when we compare like uh, there are people who have come into us into our life and you know sown the seed of good deeds or they in in some of our life they would have led us to christ by sowing the seed or some of uh, some of the seed it also can be some uh, in in the walk of a life there would be some people uh, uh, their walk in, in in the lord would have influenced us and that can that can also be a seed that can germinate, that can impact our life. The seed uh, also can be referred to the word, the promise of God, which, you know, uh, maybe at one point of some point of our life that, you know, uh, people of God would have spoken it in our life and that would have come true. Or we would have, uh, for some of us, God would have revealed it in dreams or through the prophetic word. When I say prophetic word, we need to always verify, is, uh, does that, uh, is that aligned with the word of God? We see many examples of seed uh, being uh, grown and fulfilled in the lives of people. We'll see, uh, we see that in the life of Joseph. God gave a seed like a dream for him in a very early age and how that was fulfilled. We see that in Genesis 37. And we see uh, uh, the seed in the life of Moses, how God supernaturally arranged Moses to be taught and trained in the palace, in Pharaoh's palace. And then later God used those training as a seed in the desert. We see David, how God anointed David as a very young boy by uh, Prophet Samuel. And the seed for David was, he was, uh, you know, he was a skillful musician. He was a strong warrior, though he was a shepherd boy, but God trained him. Trained him so that tomorrow when he is a king, he can be a great warrior. God shaped his life at a very young age. Same like unlike that, we would have uh, many seeds in our life that God has sown in our life to be fulfill to fulfill His call, His plan in our life. Before we could move on to the next point, can we take a short break of ten minutes and be back? Okay. Okay, we'll take a quick 10 minutes break and we can be back. Uh, so whatever the time is in your time zone from now, 10 minutes. Okay, we shall be okay. back. Okay, Pastor. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Thank you. God bless. <coughs> thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you. Much. Good bless. Thank you. We'll be back. Okay, please come back. All right, thank you so much. We are grateful. 